everybody, and welcome to another episode of Too Weird Didn't Watch, the show where we make fun of movies that we have not seen based on nothing but their weird descriptions. I'm Brandon. And I'm Albert, and we sure hope it's still Christmas by the time we're able to release this one, because we've got more Christmas movies! Look, in A Christmas Carol, it says to keep it all the year, which is how I justify listening to Christmas music in July, but still. Well, we're kicking things off right away with the movie description for fur crazy. F I R fur. This is not an anti PETA screed where she's just like, but I love killing animals and wearing their pelts as much as I would enjoy that being the case. So, Corolla Deville? Yeah, no, that's, that's, the, you, they've got that in development at Disney, the, the Cruella Deville prequel called Fur Crazy F U R. Oh. Elise McReynolds is no fan of Christmas. Which is fine. Yeah, no. Like, we like it. It's cool if you don't. That's the end of the movie. She just <laughs> has a nice life and she doesn't really care for Christmas. The end. Has a great family. Really, really decks the halls for Arbor Day. I don't know if she actually decks the halls, but she does boughs of something because of trees. Oh. Uh, never mind. That joke's you're, you're not trying real hard, but I appreciate that you're trying. It's not really landing though, but you did try, and that's what counts because Grow- it's the thought that counts. <laughs> Growing up on a tree farm meant every holiday oh, see, this was makes sense. spent selling Christmas trees on a cold street corner. Wait, that's not what the tree farmer does. No, the tree farmer farms the trees, and then like the whole the reseller comes and takes them and takes them to the cold tree corner. And they like made their kid do it. This is a they messed didn't up say world. They were a successful tree farm. Uh, the only tree farm around here, by the way, seems to be dying, and I'm very sad about the that. The one out in Allentown. Yeah, I used the to live next Whispering to that Times, one. Whispering Pines. Yeah, I think so. I used to live next to it, like way back, like back in the early '90s. We have been going to that Christmas tree farm since any time I can remember. I'm 32. 33 i'm old now <laughs> right i've been alive for a while and literally every christmas that i have a memory of i've been up at that christmas tree farm getting my tree and apparently we've cut them all down because i went out there to get the tree this year and it's looking pretty bad i am worried that they're not going to be there next year so disappointed don't have it yet by the way as you know don't yeah have my tree out at the time of recording. By the time this comes out, I will definitely have a tree. <laughs> it will happen. But when she loses her job and her dad breaks his leg, Elise agrees to run the family tree stand for one last season. Wait, do they have a tree stand or a tree farm? Well, I mean, that's when she was a kid. They had the farm, but now it's later on and she's not there to help. I guess. What are they selling <laughs> without a farm? I mean, they may sell the farm, but the stand might be where they sell it on the corner. Yeah. They might, like, rent out a little, like, small little space on a lot. Unfortunately for Elise, the family business that has always hosted the McReynolds tree farm, the McReynolds Farms tree lot has been acquired by home decor conglomerate Brook Glen. Oh, there Brook should be Glen. A there, yeah. yeah. Has been acquired by a home decor conglomerate. Has been acquired by home decor conglomerate Brook Glen, which actually sounds like a real store name that I'd probably go into. That little tongue twister that I threw at you with home decor conglomerate. Yeah, I conglomerate's had to read a hard that. enough word just to say because there's a lot of you know specific syllables in there, but throwing home decor in front of it. <laughs> It's, it's, uh, I, I frequently re say words. I cut a lot of it out of the podcast, yeah. apparently. You know, obviously, but yes, there are many times where I'm reading these sentences and they're not always carefully constructed to begin with. I mean, so again, you're reading you're... along expecting the normal sentence flow. As you said, you take a lot from reviews mm-hmm. and mm-hmm. that can just be anybody. Most people aren't thinking of the structure of a sentence while writing. <laughs> Unfortunately. They, especially after we have things like Twitter and Facebook, so people are typing a lot, but they can just like throw out sound, throw out sounds like they would be talking. So when it comes time to do a review, you just kind of continue that trend. Yep. Oh, uh, right, right, right. go to a writing class and improve your tweets. <laughs> <laughs> That's not a bad idea. <laughs> Trump. Elise gets off on the wrong foot with Surly Brook Glenn CEO 
Gary Dixon when she almost knocks him down while unloading a big tree. I mean, that's just an accident. I mean, it's a movie villain, so he's like, her. <laughs> or potential suitor. We actually can't tell yet. True Hallmark. Gary thinks the trees are horrible for business. It's uh, it, Does it matter what he thinks? Are they or are they not? It's uh it's a Christmas. Um having those would get a lot of people to come in because Yeah, Christmas. it seems like and I don't have the data here, Brantley, but it seems like if you had trees that people wanted to buy in the parking lot of your store, that would get people in the parking lot of your store, and if in the parking lot of your store, they might be more likely to go inside. Kind of like how Walmart has the trees in front. Right, yeah. It has, like, the fireworks display in the parking lot in, you know, July. Exactly. Now, it might not be great in front of GameStop, let's say, but this is a home decor store. Yes. They could probably put some Christmas wreaths on the shelves and be like, you got your tree, come get your wreath, and holly and overpriced tinsel that are, is it, it's not a real holly, it's just like a plastic holly. Oh, yeah. But, yeah. I don't, this guy's dumb. He's just wrong about how business works, in my opinion. Gary, so Gary thinks the trees are horrible for business and sets in motion a plan to get rid of the lot for good. Is the plan just not leasing to them this year? Because I love that's how a good plan. There's like a businessman villain. He has a plot. When really it's just like, and we're not going to do it anymore. Yeah, he's in charge. <laughs> like, why does he need a plan? Just, just stop. I mean, I think it's dumb, but just. I mean, I guess maybe if he's just like this year and they've like already signed off or something. I guess. Maybe there's like a contract going, but this is like, we have to destroy her for this year so she can't sell trees. Huh. Sir, we could just say no next year. No, this year must be stopped. He's going full Grinch. I guess. Despite her battles with Gary, Elise finds herself catching the holiday spirit as she helps the denizens of NYC... That stands for New York and City, Brentley. Oh. Find their one perfect tree. Uh, spoilers, it's in that... That's in the Redwoods. What? Like, they go get the Redwood tree and they put it in front of the... Uh, Rockefeller I forgot the Center. name of the place. Rockefeller, Rockefeller, Rockefeller Center. Center. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> That's where the one perfect tree is. Yours is a, inferior. That was a great episode of Animaniacs where they took Sally Acorn's or uh, Sally Squirrel's tree while she was sleeping in it. And it was like, no, you gotta go. This is the Christmas tree. She's like, nah, this is my house. Everyone from a baby on the way couple to a professional basketball team to a young boy picking out his first tree. Those are all the people she's helping find their perfect oh. tree. The so, young, is that, you think this is like a Charlie Brown crossover? <laughs> she has a bunch does of, Charlie Brown trees. live in New York. <laughs> I don't know where he lives. Charlie Brown lives in our hearts, apparently. Christmas also proves to be the season for romance. Oh, no. It cut off. I, when does it prove to be the season for romance? When charming repeat customer. Oh. I didn't realize. Hold up. We're <laughs> on the fly here. I'm we'll copying, do it live. I'm copying from the description of the YouTube video, which, by the way, there's an alternate title for this, and it's uh, Oh, Christmas Tree. But that's a cre- much better title. Nope. I don't think so. I mm. Christmas also proves to be the season for romance when charming repeat customer Darren admits he's been buying trees simply in the hopes of talking to Elise. How many trees? <gasps> yeah, like this is like through the after through the tree years? number two. Oh, maybe. Oh, you think like I. Uh, He's been creeping on her since she was, like, 12. I mean, I was assuming they went to school together, but yeah, sure. Well, he, like, so he came up, to, he's like, I'm buying my family's Christmas tree this year. They, my dad said I should have responsibility. Yeah, that sounds like a good story. Anyway, um, I'll take one Christmas tree, please. Well, see, uh, now he's charming, though. He's like, hey, I would like another Christmas tree. Thank you. Yes. I'll take one Christmas tree. <laughs> or is he just, like, buying trees and, like, It's uh, more funny if he's, he's just, just like, like, coming in every day and be like, oh, man, that last one, it burned up. I mean, I was thinking more he's just, like, giving the trees to people who can't afford them, but sure. That's a, that's a better thing. He's destroying the trees. <laughs> <laughs> he 
but she's still getting paid, so it's like it works. The corner and throws. He's got a wood chipper wood right chipper. there. Just yang. <laughs> And tomorrow I'll buy another. <laughs> I'm a genius. That last tree you sold me fell apart. Um, through no fault of my own. <laughs> hey, this is why Gary thinks they're bad for me. It's like people are just destroying the trees. Clearly, they're not good trees. <laughs> Darren, you're ruining the business <laughs> by helping her sell trees. But when Gary convinces the New York Fire Department. To shut down the lot. It's, it's a lot of wood. It's a fire hazard. It could burn down the buildings. That's, I guess. And they got a wood chipper actually blowing reasonable. sawdust everywhere. <laughs> That's more Thanks, reasonable. Darren. Elsie must, f I'm sorry, Elise must find a way to crack his Scrooge exterior. Can Elise pull off a Christmas miracle in time to save the family business? No. No, she cannot. Movie over. I got a baby here and I can talk to the baby. <laughs> Say something, baby. No, you gotta talk. You gotta say a thing. You can't just be happy. You have to say. Gah, 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 gah. Who's that? Look at me, man. I don't know. <laughs> With help from her new beau, family, friends, and customers are, and a little bit, and a little holiday magic. Santa. Also, Christmas magic. She just may have Didn't a shot. Didn't say what holiday. That Kwanzaa magic. You think there's actual real real Santa in this one too? But he has like, silver Christmas silver Christmas. Almost <laughs> everything is normal, but then there's like that one time of like, wait a minute, who was that other Santa? No, it's like there's been like a Santa there in front of the store just like the whole time, just collecting for charity and just like tossed her like every day. And it's like, who was playing Santa? And it's like, what are you talking about? Then you just hear jingle bells and it starts snowing. You're ho ho ho. And then it pans up, and there's like Holly Jolly music or something, or like a like a shooting star going across the sky, that could be a sleigh that might not be. Yeah, <laughs> we've just made the perfect Christmas movie ending. Probably already been done like eight times, like thousands of times. Well, if you dislike the title for Fur Crazy, you're going to hate Window Wonderland. That what is? I, okay. It's no holds barred when two Manhattan department store employees vie for the same job during the busy Christmas season. Sloan Van Doren is a driven young woman. A girl named Sloan? That's unusual to me. Like, Sloan Van Doren sounds like like a DC super macho villain of some kind. I was kind. thinking like a, uh, like a pulp novel yeah. villain. The name's Sloan. Sloan Van like Doran. Like, Doc Saget has to stop Sloan Van Doran before he gets the ancient artifact and kicks command of the ancient tribes. Exactly. Or it's a woman trying to get an office job. <laughs> a driven young woman determined to become... Hold on to your seat for these stakes, folks. The next window dresser at McGuire's department store. And uphold a 95-year-old artistic holiday tradition. Okay. I... I I cannot get on board with this movie where they're I'm like, just, I'm apathetic towards it, but I'm not like against it. It's just like, all right, everyone has something important to them. This is important to her. That's fine. Fair enough. Brantley, you gotta inject your good cheer and holiday spirit into my stupid I really jokes. I like Christmas, man. <laughs> I know. Um, it's a good time. Serious and professional. That, that means bad, by the way. In these movies, it's like anybody who's ever serious about anything Screw them. But she's trying to they hold care up about the stuff. artistic holiday tradition. Yeah, and if they like if they've ever made a profit in their lives, also evil. Or misunderstood but with an evil person run under them that runs the business. <laughs> yes. Who's secretly been embezzling funds to get them to stop running the toy factory for some reason. Yeah, yeah. This is how this works. <laughs> yes. Um Serious and professional, she's the polar opposite of the happy-go-lucky Jake Dooley, who he also has wants a much the job. Water. I love the naming conventions of this, too. Sloan Van Doren. Jake, Jake Dooley! Dooley. <laughs> when Mr. Like, Fitch, the head of advertising and promotion, gives them a challenge, the competition is on. Each will create a series of seasonal storefront windows twice a week until Christmas. Okay. I, it, this is like... So so she's going to be like 
focused on the commercialization. Everything's going to be like in style and everything, but he's going to be like focused on the more fun thing, but it's going to be a little chaotic, but only when they learn that they combine their two styles together, they get the perfect window storefront. And then one of them gets fired. Can I do the description for the movie, please? Fine. (laughs) I I envision this, by the way, as like one of the worst reality TV shows I can imagine. (laughs) Where they're going up before the judge, like, all right, this week, Van Doren put up her holiday special with some reindeer and a tree. Whereas happy-go-lucky Jake Dooley has, again, gone for inflatable animals for some reason. <laughs> Dooley, they're don't performing even know. an obscene act. That's a little bit too happy-go-lucky, Jake. You didn't even go with a Christmas animal. <laughs> T-Rexes are not a Christmas animal, Jake. Yes, they are. They have nothing to do with Christmas. Yes. No, I disagree. You could have used a reindeer, but no, you went for an extinct animal that eats things. <laughs> but it has a present Living in its things. mouth. So it's okay. <laughs> I gave it a scarf. <laughs> Thanks, Jake. <laughs> <laughs> Jake's just happy to be here. <laughs> <laughs> okay. The creator of whichever window display gets the most attention from passers-by will get the job, obviously. Yeah, that's... Although I would maybe base it on the profits from the store, not just who comes to look at the window, but actually which one one gets them to come inside. Yeah. As they go through their paces, with Jake's obvious talent grabbing the public's attention, a silent but mutual attraction develops between the pair, hampered by the contest and the presence of Kenneth. Sloane's blue blood boyfriend. Oh, good. Okay. I was wondering where that character was going to show up. <laughs> Who can't understand the importance Sloane is, imp- is placing on this job? See, I was confused because she had all the makings of a Hallmark villain, but she still loved Christmas. Yeah. That is only a match. But no, she has the blue blood boyfriend who's kind of lifted her up to be that kind of person. But the glove of Christmas is still bringing her a little bit more down. So now it makes sense. I am, as I mentioned earlier, 100% on this guy's side. It's like, it's a storefront. You're selling your life for a storefront display. She's looking for a promotion to where being able to handle this is her job. Her job she has now probably isn't that fulfilling. I guess that's fair. It is a form of artistic expression. It says I just they're want to know store what... employees. They're probably run the cash register. It says she's going to uphold this 95 year old holiday tradition. What is this tradition? Like what were they doing? That was so amazing for 95 straight years that Jake Dooley is going to ruin it with the T-Rex. Probably having tasteful decorations. They didn't have a T-Rex. No, you need to update it for the hip young people. They can have Christmas with T-Rex too. That I'm, sounds like a great sequel to something. Sorry. <laughs> Christmas to T-Rex 2. I want to see the first one. <laughs> uh, it's it's the sequel to Santa Jaws, actually. Ah. It's Christmas Rex. This is a dentist for now. <laughs> Have seen that one, by the way. Can't cover it. We already recovered that yeah, one. Yeah, we covered that with Shark Week. Yes. I, we need to watch it, though, now that we've recovered it. Yes. Supporting the efforts of the window dressers are McGuire's veteran window washer, Mac, and brassy bathroom attendant, Rita. So I've noticed a problem with the store. There is no like overlap of responsibilities. They have like overspecified job duties. You are the window washer. That is <laughs> your job. How many windows does this one store have? <laughs> There's at least two. I mean, I'm trying to There's think. At least two of big enough to have most window displays. Right. I, I maybe this is because I'm not from New York, right? Mm. I think this is a New York City thing. But I'm trying to imagine a store. Like a storefront mm-hmm. with so many windows that it requires a full time person a to just wash washer. them. Like he's not cleaning the floors, he's not picking up the trash outside. He's, he's just, just washing windows. Washing windows. I mean, and there's also a dedicated bathroom attendant. That I think is that, like a thing. Yeah, it's still. I know their window washers are a thing, but they're doing whole, like, skyscraper buildings Mm -hmm. or multiple different buildings. Maybe he's, you know what, maybe he doesn't just wash the windows for this store. That's true. Maybe he's doing his rounds and he's like, I'm here today to do the, you know, the... This is my favorite window to clean. Uh, Sloan's over there, not as cheery, but still pretty good. 
I've been over here. Don't know I've what been this watching these we for 95 years, and I'm glad somebody's <laughs> keeping up the tradition. I'm 120 years old. Santa? <laughs> Santa's in all these movies. He is for sure. Every movie that takes place on Christmas, Santa's in there somewhere. He's just in disguise if there's not a guy named Santa. So there's a, the sentence continues about Mac and Rita. It mm -hmm. says, they have eyes for each other, but haven't done anything about it yet. Well, yeah, she's in a relationship, and Jake is too happy-go-lucky to do that to someone. No, <laughs> Mac and Rita. Oh. Rita's the bathroom attendant. Oh, right, 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 sorry. I guess she's, like... Well, no, how close are the bathrooms to the front? <laughs> uh, do they have windows? <laughs> this is where your store is failing. The store isn't failing. It's been going for 95 strong years. That it should be failing store. now. <laughs> Look, we just bought the building. Uh, you don't have to use our bathrooms. We have new ones in the back, but, you know. They're not actually paying Mac. He just washes the women's bathroom's window all day long. <laughs> Rita thinks he's into her. He doesn't have the heart to break it to her. I mean, he's 120 years old, so it's just it's just creepy. It's not super awful. I mean, it's still awful, but it's like a different kind of awful. At least it's an attendant in a women's bathroom. Like, a men's bathroom attendant is definitely washing the guy's pee, and that's just not comfortable. Women all get stalls, so. That's true. That's less weird. <laughs> Love is in the air at McGuire's, but things aren't exactly what they seem. Who will win in this love triangle? Oh, okay. What, I don't understand what things aren't exactly what they seem could mean. Is there like some conspiracy at McGuire's now beneath all the other inanity? Yeah, what, why does there need to be some other B plot? We have plenty. There's the. We have the A plot, which is them. We have the B plot, which is that she's in a relationship and that's the love triangle that's going to develop. And then we have the C plot of Mac and Rita. Why is there more? You know what I want to see just once in these movies where like. There is the douchebag boyfriend, but instead of leaving him and going for the new guy, the douchebag boyfriend realizes, you know, I could be doing better. So Stranger Things? And he actually straightens himself out. That's a good point. Yeah, Stranger Things. Yeah. Although I, I, it's sort of played a little bit at the end where she's kind of settling because she's into the other guy. Yeah. But still he does in fact turn himself around and turn to in, turn into a semi heroic figure who is not Awful. as douchey mm -hmm. and i like that you you've nailed it stranger things doesn't have i don't is there a christmas part of that uh yeah cuz the first or part 1 is over wintry and she does communicate with him with the christmas lights you're correct yep okay never mind stranger things already did it hallmark <laughs> you keep doing your thing there's no need to deviate from this formulation once it has been deviated from once we're good. And that's it. That is the end of our Christmas coverage here on Two Weird Didn't Watch. For this year. For this year. Obviously, there will be more next year if we're still doing this next year, Brentley. I hope we are. Uh, maybe we'll do something different. Maybe. Uh, you were talking about Grimace Fairy Tales uh, recently and how you were talking about them. And I remember the old timey, uh, way back in the day when we were talking about maybe doing a podcast together, one of the ideas we ran before reading Redbox was uh, just talking about the many weird things in Grimm's fairy tales mm -hmm. and the fairy tales that nobody talks about because <laughs> it's just like and then the Virgin Mary showed up and everything was yeah. better <laughs> the time she kidnapped a girl and then stuff happened and then she was got burned at stake we don't know what the new year will hold but we thank you for listening to this we hope that you have a very Merry Christmas and we will see you guys next time with more Too Weird Didn't Watch bye guys bye